Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create something from this, a really weird looking hand lettering, doesn't look very good, into something more like this, where it's all nicely composed, balanced and looks nice. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you would like a website to host your portfolio or you would like to sell online resources such as digital brushes like me, Squarespace is a perfect fit for you. Link down below in the description. So hand lettering and composing your hand lettering can be a bit daunting for some because they don't know what they're looking for and they don't know how designers and lettering artists do it well it's quite easy but it takes a lot of time to master and it's all about symmetry and grids really it's having the eye of design knowing where things should be placed and seeing what you can do with it and emphasizing certain letters and words so today i'm going to show you how i went through this whole composition piece so you can create something a bit more like this which is a work in progress but it's near the end first of all you want to go ahead and basically find a quote now we're going to be quoting or lettering the quotes that i've already given so what i'm going to do first of all is write it down it seems a bit strange writing down the quote but it does work and it helps so let's write it all at the top so we go the power of imagination makes us infinite so you might be wondering why we're actually writing down the words. Well, it's quite simple and it's a little trick that many lettering artists don't share often. And that is to work out the size of the word. If we're gonna compose it and balance it, we need to work out the size. And because we work within grids, what we're going to do is draw a box around the words. And we very simply just do this. So the power of imagination and we basically go all the way through and this will help us basically use it like tetris and we can fit these blocks into certain areas so for instance the is one of the smaller words often us are quite small power makes are kind of like similar and infinite and imagination are quite big words so they're long and this box method really helps us define where the box is and how large the boxes should be for our letters. Another thing to take into account when it comes to lettering as well is to also make sure you know which of the letters are supposed to be the sort of killer letters, the ones that people need to see or the killer words. For instance, in this one, it is imagination and infinite. So infinite and imagination are the two big words that we want people to see and they have to be sort of striking and on the paper. So now we've got this, we've got more of an idea. We need two, four, six, seven sets of grids to make this. Or we can do it in six really, because if we do it in six, it's even more balanced on this end. So the next part of this is take the layer that you've just drawn that on and just take the opacity down. We don't want to be seeing that all the time. Now you don't need to purchase the grid builder, but I would highly recommend it. It's from Stefan and Ian, the really cool hand lettering artists, and it really does help with the composition easily. And basically what it does is it allows you, just like a brush inside of Procreate, to put grids into your work. So go ahead and create a new layer on the top. This is where we're gonna put our first grid, which is V, and we're gonna do it like this. So I'm gonna turn it to black, draw like so. And what we can do with this is we can go up to this arrow up here and basically transform it. So we're gonna to go to freeform, I'm gonna bring this in a bit, like so. I'm gonna make it quite small because I want it to be a quite a small composition on the page so you can see. Now we've got the word for the or the box for the, it sort of matches the size of this box here. Not exactly, but it kind of sort of shows the same sizing. And the next one is power. And what I'm going to do is put power on the bottom. Now what we could do is have the same box, but expand it so it's more kind of like this. But instead of doing that, we've got other grids inside of here, which you can draw yourself if you like, but the grid builder just makes it that bit easier. So what we do is we go into our layers, create a new layer, and this is the way that I like to do it. And I just plonk it down. Now notice on here, we've got these sort of lines in the middle. This helps us keep our composition straight. So you wanna line them up like so. I want it to line up with this one here and then everything is straight no matter if you squiff it up and transform it. Now obviously this is a bit too big, so I'm just gonna bring this down and bring it back up. Now this one can be this way or it could be vertical. It can be any way you want. 
But for this one, I'm going to bring it back up just a little bit so we can really emphasize the word power because that's a bit of an emphasitic word. The next word in this is off. Now, off is just like one of those words that you need to have, otherwise it wouldn't sound very good. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy and duplicate the the and bring it down. And then I'm going to actually make it a bit thinner like so because it's a smaller word not too thin and the great thing about this is we can use the sizing as visual dynamics in the whole piece so we're going to create a new layer here and the next word is imagination now this is a quite a long one and you can see from the box here it's quite a long one and I've got this little star next to it so this needs to be quite big and as you can see before when I did it over here you can see that I've really gone ahead and sort of gave it a different font style of giving it everything to make it look more elegant and to track the eye to the center of the art piece and that's what I tend to do I like to have the word that means the most in the center so what I'm going to do with this is just give it and it might sound a bit weird but a basic grid and that is just the block and I like to do this because it means that I can extend it further out. So I'm going to bring this down and make sure it extends all the way out, but keeping it still in line. And you can go ahead and basically move this and transform it if you need to. And this will help you have longer words in there. Now we've got space up here, up here, and we can use that to our benefit because we're going to be using a script writing in there. So I've merged all these layers at the top because I would run out of space for my layers on here. Now we've only got three more words in there, which is makes us infinite. What I'm going to do is bring makes us together into one word or into one line as to make sure it fits in the whole composition. So we can use the sizing here to help guide us. So in here, we're gonna use a block. Make sure your canvas is straight. Bring this down. Like so, and we can actually expand that up. Makes us give ourselves a bit more space if I need to. Then the last one we're going to do is gonna be a bit of a crazy one, and it's a really good idea for anyone. You see this part up here? It's very similar to infinite and power. Infinite and power are quite similar. So what I'm going to do is basically select this one by just selecting it like this with my marquee three fingers down copy and paste and then i'm going to go ahead into this area down here that pops up and press flip vertical just drag it down and you can see it follows the guide there from here we can actually go ahead and change this one again because it seems a bit too big so we're just going to bring that down and bring it to the middle again maybe make it a bit fatter it's all about playing around with it. If it looks good in a box, it kind of looks good everywhere else. Something that I don't like, which I've seen, is probably the top part up here. So I'll select this one. Make it a bit smaller and thinner. That looks a bit nicer in the whole composition. Now we've got all these layers, we want to go ahead and merge them all. Now the goal of this next part is to very roughly sketch in where the letters are going to go so i'm going to go ahead and roughly sketch this in and what you can do with this in fact is before creating the new layer you can lower the opacity of the other layer so it doesn't show as much you can see that i've got a grid in the background which i can take off just like this you don't really need it for this i normally use it just for my script writing so i'm very roughly just going ahead and just doing this and i'm following the lines and you can use the letter builder if you want, if you're not comfortable. But we're trying to fit the words equally inside of here. And if you're having trouble keeping your line straight, you can actually hold down on it. And if you hold a finger to it, it will keep them at a constrained angle, which is something that I use quite a lot. And it works for a great sans serif typefaces. And then imagination, this is going to be a difficult one for a lot of people, but I'm going to just script it in very roughly. You can see there with imagination, I can go ahead and flourish up here because we've got some dead space. We can work out what we do up here, but we don't need to worry about that too much just yet. But you can see there it's starting to work. We've got our letters in place and we're going to go ahead and finish it off down here with makes us. And I'm being very rough with it, but it gives you a really good idea of what you can do. For an instance like this, where I have to come further out because I've made the box too small, that is okay. You can do that later. 
or during this process is a very good way of making sure that everything is together. And for any arcs, follow the line, just like this. Oh, there's a bit of a strange end. And there we go, we've got a basic composition right there. Now, the next step of this would be to lower the opacity of this and to make sure that every word fits on there correctly. But not only that, you can see any place you can flourish. So I could flourish up here if I wanted to with that, or I could create, you know, some lines up here like so, which is a really basic way of dividing the composition up very nicely. And it works quite well. So what you do is go ahead and take this down like so, get your sketch out. So I'm gonna to go to my new sketch thing here, thing there, and I'll start sketching it in like so over the top. And I would change it as I go around. So I'm basically refining it and refining it. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you don't know about Squarespace, it's a place where you can build your own beautiful website, whether you want to be a photographer and upload your photographs on there or sell digital or physical products or have a portfolio and for clients to commission you by seeing your work on there, Squarespace does it all. And with thousands of different templates that you can choose and fully customize, you don't need to be a design wizard to know what you're doing on there. If you'd like 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace, Click the link down below in the description or use the coupon code, which is also down in the description. If you did enjoy this video, guys, I would appreciate it if you would press that big red subscribe button. I'm going to be posting more content surrounding the new iPad, Procreate and hand lettering. So guys, if you do want to see more of this, let me know. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.